Well, this uh, session is entitled the Federal State Partnership and we'll hear in just a moment from our new Secretary of Education, Margaret Spellings, and then we'll have a uh, interaction with this panel discussion. The second part of this session will relate to the state part of the discussion that will be facilitated by Governor Huckabee, so we'll leave the stage and then that group will come on uh, after that. But first, uh, we, I have the distinct honor and privilege of formally introducing our new U.S. Secretary of Education, Margaret Spelling. She has uh, served uh, in many capacities and for a variety of years as an advocate and champion for education change and reform and accountability. We want to welcome her to the summit. During President Bush's first term, Secretary Spelling served as an assistant to the President for Domestic Policy where she helped craft a variety of education policies, including the No Child Left Behind Act. Prior to her White House appointment, she worked for Governor Bush as a senior advisor on the Texas Reading Initiative, the Student Success Initiative to eliminate social promotion, and the nation's strongest school assessment and accountability system. For more than a decade, Secretary Spellings has served as a talented and energetic and effective advisor for President Bush and the coolest thing on her resume or bio is that she is the first secretary of education with school-aged children. So I think that <laughs> probably qualifies her as well as any of the rest. Uh, we look forward, Secretary Spellings, as governors, to working with you in the administration in your important new role on these important issues. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Secretary Margaret Spellings. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Governor. And they're in high school, too. Actually, one middle school and one high school. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak to this very august group today. I'm thrilled to be here. I want to thank uh, Governor Warner and Vice Chairman Governor Huckabee for uh, their leadership on this issue, as well as you all, Governor Sebelius and Governor Pawlenty, for co-chairing the Education Task Force. Uh, I also want to recognize the energetic reformers at the Business Roundtable and Achieve and the Hunt Institute. ECS for uh, helping to sponsor this event. It's going to take uh, a village to do high school reform. Um, and I also want to acknowledge my friends from the Congress, Senator Bingaman, Congressman Castle, and Congressman Inahosa, uh, for their participation today. Um, when a meeting earns the title Summit, as you all and the Governor's Associations are wont to do, it usually refers to an urgent challenge that can only be solved by working together in a bipartisan fashion, and in education, we enjoy the luxury of the opportunity to do that uh, both in our states and in Washington, which makes it uh, a pleasure to work on as an issue that's not always the case. Um, and certainly that's the case when we talk about high schools. This is a problem, as you all know and have said over and over in the last couple of days, it's been building for years. It's one we can't avoid, and it's a national priority. You all have recognized this urgency, and in fact, some of you all may experience a little deja vu as I outline the President's plan. And Governor, I'm glad to be able to say that the President's budget includes uh, an answer to almost every one of the calls that you uh, just put forward. Uh, you all are working on similar reforms around the country. In Arkansas, Governor Huckabee wants all high schools to offer rigorous coursework and advanced placement. In Wisconsin, Governor Doyle favors paying teachers not only for their length of service but on their ability to help children learn. In Minnesota, Governor Pawlenty supports allowing high school students to earn college credit. And in Virginia, my temporary governor, Governor Warner has made redesigning American high schools uh, his priority as the National Governors Association chairman. The very first words of your summit's action agenda read, America's high schools are failing to prepare too many of our students for work and higher education. It calls for upgrading coursework, aligning standards to the needs of employers and universities, recruiting and keeping highly qualified teachers, and yes, measuring students and holding schools accountable for results. As Governor Warner notes, the agenda is ambitious, but the need has never been more clear or more urgent. Amen to that. And the President and I could not agree more. There you are, Governor. Of course, talk is cheap, usually, not really in Washington or your state capitals probably, but you all have a track record of solving the problems that you talk about. And that's not to shortchange my friends in the Congress. We have worked together on the No Child Left Behind Act, as has been mentioned. But when I worked for a certain governor of Texas, I considered myself one of the luckiest people around because states are where the action is and where you have the greatest opportunity to improve education and to close the achievement gap. 
That's as much as credit to the system as to the people in it. When our founders wrote the Constitution, they didn't write a laundry list of what states could do, and they reserved a few tasks for the federal government and reserved the rest to the states and the people in it. And that is particularly the case with public education. It was unprecedented, it was genius, and as a former governor, it's the spirit by which President Bush governs today. When President Bush was governor, one of his top priorities was to bring high standards and accountability to Texas public schools. Now, I don't want to be a Texas braggadocio, but after we did, Texas students showed some of the greatest achievement gains in the country. And in the words of Time Magazine, black and Latino children made galloping gains in math and reading scores, narrowing the achievement gap. The lesson, accountability works. Of course, we weren't the only ones who understood that. Many of you here deserve much, as much credit as well. Governor Hunt at the time of the Hunt Institute now was a, a leader uh, during that period as well. A little later when the governor ran for president, he had to look at education from a national perspective. He understood that the federal government had a role to play, a historic role that began in 1965 when President Johnson signed the Elementary and Secondary Education Act giving the first federal aid to high poverty school districts. But while the inputs were there, the accountability for results were missing. Senator Robert F. Kennedy asked in 1966, what happened to the children? Do you mean we spent a billion dollars and you don't know whether they can read or not? By the year 2000, 35 years and $130 billion later, reading and math scores were stagnant and the achievement gap was growing. So the President's first legislative priority four years ago was the No Child Left Behind Act. The genius of the law was to hold states accountable for results and to measure student performance annually. Under the law, different strategies were not just allowed but encouraged, the kind of innovation for which governors are well known. Just this week, Delaware, Florida, and New Jersey, among others, decided to use the Department of Education's teacher-to-teacher e-learning courses to meet the highly qualified teacher requirements. Eighteen months after it was signed, all 50 states had unique accountability plans in place. Not one governor chose to leave his Title I funds on the table. Not one sent an army of lobbyists to Washington to find a way out of it, and no one declared it unconstitutional. As the Washington Post noted Friday, you focused your energy not on blocking testing and standards, but on trying to find ways to raise them. In other words, you're making the law work. Today, as a result, reading and math scores are on the rise. Nearly every state reports achievement gains, and the pernicious achievement gap is beginning to close. Those galloping gains I spoke about are being tracked around the nation, particularly in urban school districts. President Bush had faith in local educators and in you governors, and that faith is being rewarded. Now we're being tested again. Everyone in this room recognizes that our high schools are not yet part of this success story. Too many students are being left behind. As you've talked about over and over these last couple days, 68 of every 100 student entering ninth graders will graduate on time. Fewer than 20 will graduate college on time. 80% of the fastest growing jobs require a post-secondary education. And a crisis stage in the high demand fields of science and engineering. A recent survey by Computing Research Association found a 19% drop in enrollment in computer technology and engineering in 2003. China graduates 16 times as many engineering majors as the United States, South Korea and Japan four times as many as I'm sure Bill Gates reminded you yesterday. Another problem is the growing burden of remedial education. A Manhattan Institute study finds that 32% of students leave high school prepared for college. And I would add that it's like taxing an employer twice when we have to pay for remediation. States do not have the luxury of a captive audience. Residents can come and go, and so can jobs. You work too hard for this con to continue, and we must make a high school diploma a ticket to success in the 21st century. Under the President's proposed high school initiative, students will be tested in two additional high school grades in reading and math. The President's 2006 budget contains $250 million to fund these additional assessments. Today, some four states are doing this, Utah, Texas, California, and Colorado, in all three high school grades. 
The budget also contains more than $1.2 billion to help at-risk or struggling high school students. Governors would be able to invest as they see fit for dropout for prevention, vocational and technical programs, college awareness programs, or more. Schools could develop individualized performance plans for students at risk of falling behind or dropping out. The President shifts decision-making power to the states by consolidating programs with a shared purpose and reallocating money to you to get results. One of those results must be improved preparation. Students with great expectations for the future often find themselves betrayed by inadequate coursework. As of last fall, just 24 states required three years of math to graduate and only 21 required three years of science. 40% of high schools do not even offer advanced placement courses. We must expand these numbers. Research shows that rigorous high school coursework is one of the best predictors of future success. So the President has proposed a 73% increase in funding for advanced placement and international baccalaureate programs to meet, reach more low-income and minority students. These funds can be used to train teachers or to defray costs such as exam fees for students. A new Presidential Math Science Scholars Program would award up to $5,000 each to low-income college students engaged in those demanding and in-demand pursuits. The budget would also invest $45 million to encourage students to take more rigorous courses, including $33 million for enhanced Pell Grants and a $12 million boost for the State Scholars Program. This public-private partnership strives for a college-ready curriculum in every high school, including four years of English, three years of math and science, and two years of foreign language and would offer a Pell enhancement of $1,000 per year for students who complete this rigorous course of study. Finally, because teachers are the key to success, a $500 million teacher incentive fund would reward those who make outstanding progress in raising student achievement or narrowing the achievement gap. And the President has proposed in keeping the 17500 loan forgiveness, making permanent that provision that was enacted last year. He's also proposed $200 million for a Striving Readers Initiative and $120 million for math to help students be able to do and successfully, be successful at high school level work, as well as $125 million for a community college access grant to support dual enrollment in your states. Your action agenda calls on the nation to raise expectations for what high school students should be required to achieve. It calls on states to improve the quality of teaching and leadership, and it calls on all of us to restore the value of a high school diploma. I believe the President's budget will help you achieve these shared goals. Governors have long been leaders in the accountability movement, and as we move to the next phase, I ask for your support, for your input, and for your spirit of innovation. And I know that some of you are looking for some flexibility. I understand that. In the past, we've come to agreements on several aspects of No Child Left Behind, such as qualifications for rural and multi-subject teachers and a safe harbor to achieve adequate yearly progress. I'm traveling the nation and listening to your concerns. But we must draw a bright line on the linchpins of this law. Annual testing of all students, disaggregation of testing data, to name two. No longer can we allow minority, disadvantaged, or disabled kids to be misdiagnosed, hidden behind the averages, and lost in the shuffle. This law is an expression of the President's belief and your belief that every child can learn and every child must be taught. Change is hard. Getting every child to graduate high school with a meaningful diploma in their hands is one of the biggest challenges our country faces and it's never been done before. That's why there's pushback from both sides of the political spectrum. In Washington, like your state capitals, when both sides grumble, it means you're doing something right. So I applaud you for confronting these challenges head on and staying ahead of the curve. I look forward to working with you, you governors, and with the Congress to reach a solution for children. Thank you very much.